Hey everyone, Sir Terry here again. And you know what time it is. It's OPO7 bots opening time. So, shout outs first of all to Tier 1 Games in New Jersey. So I was able to find two boxes of OPO7 at their store this weekend. Uh, usually I like to, I, I never want to pay more than MSRP. Uh, but I ended up paying 120 for each of these boxes, which is not too far from MSRP and it's still cheaper than what I see a lot of my friends playing. I think if I wanted to get boxes this early to open for you guys, I was going to have to pay a little bit of a premium. So it's fine with that. But we have two boxes of OPO7. And like we have done in the channel before, we're going to open both boxes and just see what we get. And uh, yeah, just kind of go from there. Hopefully it shouldn't take us more than 20 minutes, but you guys all know me right now. I love to ramble like I'm doing right now. So we'll see what ends up happening. So let me just open up the shrink wrap here and then we'll start one box at a time. All right, so we have the first of the boxes here and let's just get right to it, right? Let's just not waste any time here and just open them one at a time. I'm gonna keep them here on the side so that I can just grab them and open it for you guys. But uh, yeah, I actually don't know that there's a lot of like chase cards that I have in OPO7, right? Like I'm planning to play red, purple, law on OP7 and I already have every card for the deck except for the Sandy. So I guess if I get the Sandy, I'll be happy. But aside from that, there's not like any chase cards. Obviously, everybody wants to pull the manga cards. I have yet to pull a single manga card in any of the boxes that I have opened up of any any set to be honest. I, I usually open two boxes on every set and I haven't opened like literally a single manga card, manga card ever. So Maybe we get lucky today, but aside from that, most of the cards are like pretty straightforward here, right? We haven't really seen anything crazy. We have two leader packs here back to back. Uh, I like Vegapunk. <laughs> I had a lot of fun when I was showing him up for you guys. I'm gonna put like the cards all the way on the side here, so they're out of my way. I had a lot of fun with Vegapunk when I showcased him for you guys in the channel. Unfortunately, I just wish he was a little bit stronger, right? But just not not there for Vegapunk. Okay, we're getting a lot of these Vegapunk cards and we got the Vegapunk leader. Uh, we saw the Lucy leader in the first pack, and Lucy is obviously going to be one of our top decks. And this is three leader packs in a row. We have Patsy. Uh, honestly, this time is actually really good, by the way. If you guys haven't seen the new Perona version that's going to play in the Wano cards, it plays the Sutamas, and you just get a lot of value with the Tama and all the draw that you get from the Wano package. Uh, Patsy was also a very fun leader. If you guys haven't seen our OPO7 showcase, I recommend watching that. It's. it's a fun leader, let's just say it that way. I don't know that it's good enough, right? But it was fun, not, not to say the least. Okay, okay, and... Oh, there we go, we get our first hit of this box. And it's the 4-mana Jimbe. And this Jimbe is actually very playable, right? Like, almost every blue deck is playing this, this card now. Well, when I say almost every blue deck, I mean Boa and the Flamingo. Just because you're able to kind of cheat out another 7 of the Warlords cards. So that's actually a very good hit, in my opinion, there. That we just got uh so that's a dope that's a that's a good way to start let's put this here on this side and then let's continue just opening up and see what happens right all right all right Oop, we left in here as well on the screen <laughs> she wants to sneak in there okay nothing crazy nothing crazy so far okay so the things that i'm looking for aside from just the sanji i wouldn't mind hitting the secret ace to be honest um because you are going to play four secret aids in almost like ML, for example, and a lot of these yellow decks that I've got running around. So I wouldn't mind hitting that to have the, you know, the flexibility of being able to switch to like ML if I want to. Okay, that's our first Sandy, right? So again, these are the cards that we're looking for to complete our red purple law. Uh, so we hit the first Sandy and I'm going to keep it separate from the rest so that I know to grab that later. Um, yeah, so we're looking for four Sandys. I wouldn't mind. Honestly, I know it's a low roll to hit the secret rares a lot of times, but I wouldn't mind hitting two secret rare A's and just at least only having to purchase two instead of having to purchase like four of them, right? Uh, Frankie is also a really good card that you're going to see in a lot of yellow decks. So, you know, obviously also want to see those in my in my pools if I can. But yeah, I mean, the meta, as you saw in my tier list video, just uh, two days ago now, it's gonna be that's the boa, right? It's gonna be Lucy, it's gonna be Gecko Moria, it's gonna be your nails, it's gonna be your red purple light. Those are in my opinion definitely for sure the top four decks. Uh with Bonnie, Perona, 
being very close behind um which is get uh black yellow luffy as well very close behind right so you have to just be prepared to build those decks and that's the one that we're just talking about or be able to be build them right uh beat them and then we have the dawn for this set which is actually a pretty cool dawn right so seven waters of the sea uh, i usually have a dawn from each set on my play on my main deck so this is gonna go right into my deck as well there as a playable card so uh just be ready to beat those decks or be able to build those decks obviously um and again it's not hard to finish up red purple love you already have it uh for lushi a lot of the cards are going to be right here in opio 7 so if you if your goal is to build lushi like tempest kick for example then you want to be able to probably open enough opio 7 packs to be able to get a lot of the lushi cards although again if you don't care about opening packs, as I always say, singles are always going to be better. Buying singles is always going to be better than buying boxes. The only reason I buy boxes is for you guys. Because <laughs> I like opening them with you guys here. Because otherwise, like I said, I could just buy the four Sandys for a lot cheaper than what I pay for these boxes. Um, which, you know, but, but, but I like having fun with you guys. I like just chilling here, doing, so doing something different. Just opening the boxes and uh, chit chatting, right? I feel like we haven't hit like any crazy cards. Like even like my 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 SRs haven't been crazy. Oh, well, I mean, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. We just been talking about the Sanjis, huh? We have been talking about the Sanjis, and look who we hit here. We hit the Altar Sanji. So. This Sanji is really good. I mean, obviously we really, we pulled, we pulled the regular art earlier, right? So the Sanji is really good because you can just cheat them out with your red purple law, right? Uh, they're going to cost three uh, when they're in your hand. So you end up playing them with red purple law ability, or you can just play them after you use your, your leader effect, right? So, so that's, that's two hits in this box already, which means that there's potentially one more hit or the rest of the packs are going to be complete duds, right? We, we, we'll see which way it goes. Um, ooh, wow, wow. That's honestly, that Sandy looks really good. I mean, okay, that box has actually been pretty good so far. I'm not gonna, cannot complain here. Yeah, that's the Kaku again. A lot of your, a lot of your new Lushi cards are going to be coming right out of OPO7. So if your goal is to build Lushi, yeah, you, you, you don't mind opening packs, but you can still probably find all those cards a lot cheaper. If you just buy them singles. Uh, okay, okay, keep out. No, no, no. Lucy. I actually haven't even seen this card when I was like deck building. Oh no, I did see it. I just didn't decide to play it. Okay. This our SR Bonnie. And Bonnie's also really nice, right? Bonnie's really cool. Uh as an SR. Some people don't play her though. So you know, it's a it's a mid it's a mid back whether whether you actually want to include her in your Bonnie deck or not. Um I do, I do like her. I play her on my version of Bonnie. So, let's see here, Khalifa. So more of those CP9 cards. And there's the Boa, right? <laughs> so Boa is really good in the Boa deck. Just being able to lock down an opponent's units, especially if you're going like against, um, if you're going against a Sorrow, for example, right? You can just lock down a Sorrow and they won't be able to attack with the Sorrow, which is one of the really big benefits of pulling up that Boa. But anyways, let me know. Let me know what you guys have hit. Like, if you, I know someone told me that it hit manga at uh, the manga boa recently. So, if you guys get any cool hits, let me know. Let me know what decks you guys are trying to build. I'm always down to chat with you guys, whether on Discord, on the YouTube comments, or on Twitter. Anyway, we got the dragon. So that's like three SR packs back to back. This dragon is really, really good as well. Uh, I think it's like a staple in a lot of red decks, uh, just because you're able to just swing for nine and then be able to. Put the two rested down on your leader so you're able to swing for seven and then also swing for nine and as we know those seven and nine numbers etc are really good when it comes to just taking life from the opponents uh from the opponents from the opponent like doing damage to the opponent's life right okay okay shaka karina luffy so this luffy is really good as well <laughs> We, we, we hidden the good stuff in the bottom of the box, like all these SRs. This Luffy is really good. It's a staple in Black Yellow Luffy, right? Uh, it's so crazy just how how good it is at removing some of the key cards that you might run into uh, in this meta, right? So 
That was uh, that was a good hit. That was a good hit. It's giving me a lot a lot to talk about. We'll go like this. I need to keep looking at my screen to make sure that I'm actually putting in the frame. Ka, okay. I was gonna say Cavendish, but this is Basil Hawkins. I almost mixed him up. Uh, Basil Hawkins, another SR. Really good in the Bonnie deck, right? Uh, it's really hard for opponents to remove this, especially black decks have a really hard time removing this because whenever they play a black removal into the Hawkins, you can just rest whatever that unit was that was used to, to try to KO the Hawkins, right? So you need to, you usually need to KO it with like attacking with a Brook, or you can KO it by like attacking, uh, try to kill it twice, which ends up being a lot of resources. So that's like a staple in the Bonnie decks. Uh, so I'm hitting some good SRs. I'm hitting some very good assumptions, I'm not going to lie. Foxy. <laughs> Foxy and Shopper. I actually thought this Foxy was an SR. That's that's so insulting that this Foxy is actually just a rare. Man, Foxy got the short end of the, the short end of the stick in this in his own release set, right? Like I feel like Foxy didn't really get as much support to even make that deck playable. Like I think Banda just said, "Okay, this is a meme leader, so we're going to just leave it as a meme leader." Okay, okay. All right, Fisher Tiger. We have four more packs in this box, and it's taking us a little bit over 10 minutes. Like I said, I just ramble on a lot. So the bid is probably going to be closer to 30 minutes than what I expect every 20. We get the Dragon Leader. This Luffy is actually really good as well. Um, I don't mind playing this in a Luchi deck because he actually doesn't KO, it trashes. Which means that you can get around the Sabo, 5 plus Sabo, you know, not 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 letting things get KO effect. Which ends up being really, really nice. So we have Edison, Vega Force, Alifa, eh, Robin, Crocodile, Hamburg, Otama, and this is another Jinbe, right? So we found the the altar later, later earlier, and now we have the regular Jinbe, which is gonna be a really good card for any blue deck that decides to play the seven warriors of the seed package right so we have two more packs in this box come on come on give me a three hit box give me a three hit box please koala anodyne sorrow foxy tempest kid one last pack one last pack let's just throw this here on the side moment of two wait we only hit one down here right so this should be do they still have two down per pack per box? So this should be another down pack, right? Yeah, I think it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. I would say, yeah, we only have one down. So we have a two hit box here, but honestly, I'm not upset. Both of these old arts are pretty sweet. And they're both very playable cards, right? So that's kind of what you want to look for in a lot of your old arts. Just cards that you're actually going to play in the decks that you plan to play. So now I know that I can play Sandy or I can play Jimbe if I'm going to play any of this, uh, any of these two decks. So yeah, we have one more box here. So let's go ahead right to the second box after I clean up real quick. So we have the second box right here and let's just go right to it. 24 more packs. Maybe we get lucky. Maybe we don't. We'll see what happens. One day, right? One day we'll pull a ball again. One day. I mean, if you count how many boxes, let me, let me, let me remember. So. For OPO one, I actually opened. I only opened two boxes for OPO one. Um, no, yeah, two boxes of OPO one, two boxes of OPO two. I think for OPO three was the only one where I did like three boxes, uh, and then OPO four was back to two. OPO five was two. Uh, OPO six, we opened it together here, right? And we it was like it was technically a box, and then like a bunch of loose packs, and then we have two of EBO one and two of this. Usually, again, always two boxes because I find two boxes is enough to uh, not to not only to make a video for you guys, but also to get most of the rares, most of the rares, most of the comments. You get four copies of them in two boxes. You usually tend to get at least one to two copies of most SRs as well. So you end up just needing to buy like whatever additional SRs you need to get, kind of finish up your deal. Uh, so I think it's fine. Uh, again, and I like opening packs with you guys, so that's why we do this. So there's another Basil Hawkins here, right? So that's our second one. Um, makes it also, I guess, again, it's always cheaper to use by single, but it makes, if you do hit something cool like a Manga Boa, you could definitely kind of pay off for a lot of the boxes that you have bought over the last year. But it's really hard. It's really hard to just chase for that. When, like I said, I opened so many boxes and I haven't, I haven't even hit, ever hit a single Manga Rare. 
Um, even with all the extra packs as well that I have won from like locals tournament, etc. It's just like don't get don't get fooled by hey I'm gonna open a manga. You, you have to buy like cases to like to like reliably pull mangas. Some people do get lucky though. I seen that I had a friend that pulled three manga Usops one time and it was kind of crazy. So here we get another done. Okay, so we're four packs in and we haven't seen a single hit yet. Hopefully this is at least a three hit box, right? Um, you either can get two old arts and a secret rare, right? So that would be better than just another two hit box. But again, uh, okay, well, we, we low roll here with Porch. So Porch is the SR for the Poxy Pirates. <laughs> I'm disappointed, guys. Okay, okay, but it's just a, it's a cool art at least, right? It's a cool art at least. Copium. Uh, this is why you don't open boxes. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm ever going to play this card. Uh, obviously, Foxy is not really ever going to be a meta deck, but uh, we'll leave it there. It's it's an old time. It's an old time. Right, so we really we really need this box to be a three hit box, right? To make to make us make us happy again compared to the first box. The first box was going like it wasn't three hit, but we had two very playable uh, old arcs. And that's the second down there, so we shouldn't have any more dons here. So, yeah, the first box at least gave us two playable SRs, which is better than something like Porch, which we're always, we're never gonna really play, right? Okay, okay, nothing crazy here. Yeah, it's just a leader pack. We get another Kaku. We're still looking for two more Sanjis as well. We, we only opened one regular one and the old tart one. Hmm. Uh, Let's hope that we get it. I would, I mean, again, for this set, it doesn't look like this SRs are that expensive. So I wouldn't mind, like, it wouldn't be a big deal to purchase them. Oh, this is a little bit. It wouldn't be a big deal to purchase them, but I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather just say, okay, I've got pulled them all and I can just play my red purple law right away. And I don't have to buy anything until next set when I'm also gonna play Red Purple Law. Although, although Bandai just announced that they're gonna, they just made an announcement for an announcement, right? They just announced that they're gonna be announcing a ban list and a restriction in August. So we'll see what they do with Red Purple Law. Because the thing about Red Purple Law though is that if they decide to just ban Red Purple Law, I wonder if they're gonna make the ban uh, effective right away for the West. Or they're going to do what they did with Sakasuki and it still let us play with Red Purple Law in OPOA for a while before they actually ban it. It's, it should be interesting. It should be interesting. I know people were not happy about the fact that we still had Sakasuki for pretty much all of OPO 7. Uh, oh, sorry, all of OPO 6. Um, it just got banned like really late, right? It got really, it, ran, it got banned like right before the release of OPO 7. Um, so if they let us still play with Red Purple Law for OPO 8, I think obviously that's gonna be our deck of choice. If Red Purple Law does get banned, um, I might go back to Black, right? So I was a second switch player, I might go back to like Lushi or Gekko Moria. The problem with both of those is that I'm missing a lot of cards. I'm missing a lot of cards and we haven't been pulling a lot of the, that's the regular porch here. Uh, we haven't been pulling a lot of the, the Lushi cards here. We haven't been pulling a lot of the SRs that we need for Lushi. Uh, we haven't pull any of the secret verse albums either so we'll see we'll see what happens it's gonna be expensive to build lucy in my opinion i guess honestly it's probably better there's a chance that they also restrict or ban some of the some of the black cards right i know a lot of people have been calling for restrictions on the a cost gecko moria so it's possible that it's not just ooh, i don't know whether that pack took me forever to open it's possible that it's not just law that gets hit, but also some, some parts of black of the black decks. Uh, Lucy. Oh, there we go. That's Sanji number three. Let's go. So we just need one more Sanji. We just need one more Sanji and we'll have our Red Purple Law deck completed. Just like that. Right? So we'll see. Mega Force. So yeah, so we'll see. I, I think I'd be very disappointed if, if Red Purple Law is all that they hit. If you think about how when they ban Sakasuki, they also hit Reject and they also hit Great Eruption, right? So it wasn't just Sakasuki that got hit. Uh, so I think it's realistic 
for them to be like, okay, you know, let's touch Rapper for Law, but with Rapper for Law gone, well, what do we expect to be the best deck in the meta going forward? And should we briefly touch them? Uh, I'm honestly, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I think I'm a little bit tired of eight cost Gecko Moria myself. Every black deck plays Gecko Moria. Perona, Black Yellow Luffy, Moria, Lushi, Sakasuki used to play it, right? Uh, even Rebecca plays it, right? Like, I understand. It, it's kind of a weird situation because I feel like with Black Gecko Moria, black decks might go back to being really weak. But at the same time, I feel like Gecko Moria is just pushing too many too many decks out of the matter, right? Like, it's really hard to develop a board and keep, keep pressure against the black player when they can just play Gecko Moria on their eight turn and just be able to remove one of your units or two of your units and still be able to also develop two bodies at the same time. Like, nothing is worse than seeing a Gecko Moria into, like, a Lushi, for example, that removes two of your units and now they have a 9k body and a 6k body on the field. Um, so... I, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind a restriction or something on the A cost uh get Moria to kind of see what happens after that, right? It might it might make it so that blue actually becomes kind of crazy. Uh because blue kind of gets very gets counted pretty heavily by now by black decks. So we'll see what. Uh with Rapper for Law though, I don't know. I don't know what the best cards is to hit there. I don't think you want to ban Black Maria because Black Maria is really good for not only Law, but also for like King and Kaido. And I think it feels unfair to get rid of that, that card when it's enabling other decks. I think you have to hit other cards on the Red Purple Law player itself. Whether you ban the leader straight up, which we saw with Sakasuki, or you do something else, I think you definitely have to do something on it. We haven't found our second hit in this box just yet. Okay, we find another Luffy here. We also have we have three more packs. Oh shoot. We've been talking and rambling so much about the band list that I didn't realize that we were so close to the bottom of the box. This is not looking great, great guys. I think this is gonna be another two-hit box, unfortunately. So it might just be another two-hit box. And if we don't get another Sanji, we still gonna have to buy a Sanji from somebody. Oh no. Okay, another boa. Why couldn't that be a Sanji? Two more packs, two more packs. There's also a chance that I rambled too much and I just missed missed it. And you guys are like, Great Charmer, you missed the pool earlier. You missed an old early earlier. That'd be kind of funny. Oh no, there's our second hit, right? So this is the Sabo. So this a secret red card does count as a hit. Um uh, disappointing box. Disappointing box. That way I prefer the ace. I would prefer the Ace over the Sabo. Um, like, honestly, okay, so we were just talking about Moria. We have one pack left. We were just talking about Moria. Sabo is so much more fair, right? Sabo still gets rid of two bodies, but you're not developing two bodies. You're only developing Sabo. So it's not like Gecko Moria that can develop three bodies. Gecko plus a four cost plus, you know, something less. Usually the second card is kind of useless. So technically they said that you're only developing two bodies, but like, I think Sabu is a lot more fair. So with Sabu being in the game now, I think it's completely reasonable to like, look at what Gekko Mora is doing. So last pack, last pack. Is there any way to redeem this box? Or did we get a dud here? Oh, leader pack. All right. So those were our two boxes. Right, first box started out really well. I think Sandy and Jimbe were really awesome. Right, two very playable cards. Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna play this Sandy on my RP Law deck. Right, that way I only have to buy one more of the regular art. And then the second box was a little bit more disappointing. We had Sabo and Porch, but hey, that's what happens when you gamble. That's what happens when you gamble with box openings, and that's why if you don't have the money. You should not be buying boxes. You should just be buying singles so that you don't have to deal with bad luck like we did for today. So not one of our best boss pops openings, but hey, maybe one day, one day guys, one day we'll hit the manga room. Maybe one day, who knows, who knows? But hopefully Sunday we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, hope you all enjoy my, all my talk, all my talking, all my rambling around. Uh, that's gonna be it for us for today we're gonna go back tomorrow with gameplay video 
with OP07, right? Continue with the OP07, this time trying to revisit other leaders uh, and kind of just start working through the OP07 meta. So hope you enjoyed the box opening. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post one of these videos every single day. Uh, you can also find us on Twitch, it's just a channel we stream every now and then, and you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.